using a robotic third thumb can impact how the hand is represented in the brain finds a new study led by university college london ucl researchers the team trained people to use a robotic extra thumb and found they could effectively carry out dexterous tasks like building a tower of blocks with one hand the researchers report in the journal science robotics that participants trained to use the thumb also increasingly felt like it was a part of their body designer danny cloud began developing the device called the third thumb as part of an award winning graduate project at the royal college of art seeking to reframe the way we view prosthetics from replacing a lost function to an extension of the human body she was later invited to join professor tamer mackins team of neuroscientists at ucl who were investigating how the brain can adapt to body augmentation professor mackin said body augmentation is a growing field aimed at extending our physical abilities yet we lack a clear understanding of how our brains can adapt to it by studying people using danny's cleverly designed third thumb the research team sought to answer key questions around whether the human brain can support an extra body part and how the technology might impact our brain the third thumb is 3d printed making it easy to customize and is worn on the side of the hand opposite the user's actual thumb near the little finger the wearer controls it with the pressure sensors attached to their feet on the other side of the big toes wirelessly connected to the thumb both toe sensors control different movements of the thumb by immediately responding to subtle changes of pressure from the wearer for the study 20 participants were trained to use the thumb over 5 days during which they were also encouraged to take the thumb home each day after training to use it in daily life scenarios totaling 2 to 6 hours of wear time per day those participants were compared to an additional group of 10 control participants who wore a static version of the thumb while completing the same training during daily sessions in the lab participants were trained to use the thumb focusing on tasks that help to increase the cooperation between their hand and the thumb such as picking up multiple balls or wine glasses with one hand they learned the basics of using the thumb very quickly while the training enabled them to successfully improve their motor control dexterity and hand thumb coordination participants were even able to use the thumb when distracted building a wooden block tower while doing a math problem or while blindfolded the study shows that people can quickly learn to control an augmentation device and use it for their benefit without overthinking the researcher says that they saw that while using the third thumb people changed their natural hand movements and they also reported that the robotic thumb felt like part of their own body body augmentation could one day be valuable to society in numerous ways such as enabling a surgeon to get by without an assistant or a factory worker to work more efficiently this line of work could revolutionize the concept of prosthetics and it could help someone who permanently or temporarily can only use one hand to do everything with that hand but to get there we need to continue researching the complicated interdisciplinary questions of how these devices interact with our brains before and after the training the researchers scanned participants brains using fmri while the participants were moving their fingers individually they were not wearing the thumb while in the scanner the researchers found subtle but significant changes to how the hand that had been augmented with the third thumb but not the other hand was represented in the brain's sensory motor cortex in our brains each finger is represented distinctly from the others among the study participants the brain activity pattern corresponding to each individual finger became more similar a week later some of the participants were scanned again and the changes in their brain's hand area had subsided suggesting the changes might not be long term although more research is needed to confirm this
This study is the first one investigating the use of an augmentation device outside of a lab. It is the first augmentation study carried over multiple days of prolonged training and the first to have an untrained comparison group. The success of this study shows the value of neuroscientists working closely together with designers and engineers to ensure that augmentation devices make the most of our brain's ability to learn and adapt while also ensuring that augmentation devices can be used safely.